ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम ऑल टू द डे ट्वेंटी वन ऑफ द रीडिंग फ्रॉम कृष्ण कथा सॉरी फ्रॉम द कृष्ण बुक एंड वी आर ऑन चैप्टर इलेवन किलिंग द डीम्स वतासुर एंड बकासुर यस्टे वी फिनिश रीडिंग वेन द टू sons of kuber mani grieve and nal kuber were delivered from the arjuna trees and after that krishna got some fruits from a fruit vendor and in exchange he gave a handful of grains to the lady and that lady's basket became filled with the jewels so this is to so show that anyone who is even giving a handful of grains or a handful of something very insignificant something to lord is actually not a loser he or she is gaining millions of times in return so let's begin our reading today One day Lord Krishna the liberator of the twin Arjuna trees was playing with Balaram and other children on the bank of the Yamuna and because it was already late Rohini the mother of Balaram went to call him back home but Balaram and Krishna were so engrossed in playing with their friends that they did not wish to come back they just engaged themselves in playing more and more when Rohini was unable to take them back home she went home and sent mother yashoda to call them again mother yashoda was so affectionate towards her son that as soon as she came out to call him back home she felt so happy she loudly cried my dear child please come back home your time for lunch is already passed she then said my dear krishna oh my dear lotus eyed child please come back and have some milk you have played enough you must be very hungry my dear little child you must be tired from playing for so long she also addressed balram thus my dear rama the glory of your family my dear child please come back with your younger brother krishna immediately you have been engaged in playing since morning and you must be very tired please come back and take your lunch at home your father nandaraja is waiting for you he has to eat so you must come back so that he can eat as soon as krishna and balram heard that nand maharaj was waiting for them and could not take his food in their absence they started to run return their playmates complained krishna is leaving us just at the point when our play is at the summit next time we shall not allow him to leave his playmates then threatened not to allow him to play with them again krishna became afraid and instead of going back home he went back again to play with the boys at that time mother yashoda scolded the children and told krishna my dear krishna do you think that you are a street boy you have no home please come back to your home i see that your body has become very dirty from playing since morning now come home and take your bath besides today is your birthday ceremony therefore you should come back home and give cows in charities to the brahmanas don't you see how your playmates are decorated with ornaments by their mothers you should also be cleansed and decorated with nice dress and ornaments please therefore come back take your bath dress yourself nicely and then again you may go on playing in this way mother yashoda called back lord krishna and balram and lord shiva and balram who were worshipable worshipable by great demigods like lord brahma and lord shiva she was thinking of them as her children when mother yashoda's children krishna and balram came home she bathed them very nicely and dressed them with ornaments she then called for the brahmanas and through her children she gave many cows in charity for the occasion of krishna's birthday In this way she performed the birthday ceremony of Krishna at home. 
After this incident, all the elder cowherd men assembled together and then the Maharaj presided. They began to consult among themselves how to stop great disturbances in the Mahavan on account of the demons. In this meeting, Upanand, the brother of Nanda Maharaj, was present. He was considered to be a learned and experienced and he was a well-wisher of Krishna and Balram. He was a leader and he addressed the meeting as follows. My dear friends, now we should leave here for another place because we are continually finding that great demons are coming here to disturb the peaceful situation and they are especially attempting to kill the small children. Just consider Putna and Krishna. It was simply by the grace of Lord Hari that Krishna was saved from the hands of such a great demon. Next, the whirlwind demon took Krishna away in the sky, Trinavrat, but by the grace of Lord Hari, he was saved, and the demon fell down on a stone slab and died. Very recently, this child was playing between two trees, and the trees fell down violently, and yet there was no injury to the child. So Lord Hari saved him again. Just imagine the calamity if this child or any other child playing with him were crushed by the falling trees. Considering all these incidents, we must conclude that this place is no longer safe. Let us leave. We have all been saved from different calamities by the grace of Lord Hari. Now we should be cautious and leave this place and reside somewhere where we can live peacefully. I think that we should all go to the forest known as Vrindavan. Where just now there are newly grown plants and herbs, it is very suitable for pasturing ground for our cows and we and our families, the gopis with the children, can very peacefully live there. Near Vrindavan is Govardhan Hill, which is very beautiful. And there is newly grown grass and fodder for the animals. So there will be no difficulty in living there. I therefore suggest that we start immediately for that beautiful place as there is no need to waste any more time. Let us prepare all our carts immediately and if you like, let us go keeping all the cows in front. On hearing the statement of Upanand, all the cowherd men immediately agreed. Let us go there. Everyone then loaded all the household furniture and utensils on the carts and prepared to go to Vrindavan. All the old men of the village, the children, and women were arranged on seats and the cowherd men equipped themselves with bows and arrows to follow the carts. All the cows and bulls were placed in the front along with their calves and the men with their bows and arrows surrounded the herds and carts and began to blow on their horns and bugles. In this way, with tumultuous sound, they started for Vrindavan. And who can describe the damsels of Raja? They were all seated on the carts and were beautifully dressed with ornaments and costly saris. They chanted the pastimes of Lord Krishna as usual. Sorry, child Krishna in this instance. Mother Yashoda and Mother Rohini were seated on a separate cart and Krishna and Balram were seated on their laps. While Mother Rohini and Yashoda were riding on the cart, they talked to Krishna and Balram and feeling the pleasure of such talks, they looked very beautiful. In this way, after reaching Vrindavan, where everyone lives eternally, very peacefully and happily, they encircled Vrindavan, drew all the carts together in half a circle and in this way constructed a temporary residence. When Krishna and Balram saw the beautiful appearance of Vrindavan, Govardhan Hill and the banks of river Yamuna, they felt very happy. As they grew up, they began talking with their parents and others in childish language. Thus, they gave great pleasure to the, all the inhabitants of Vrindavan. Soon, Krishna and Balram had grown sufficiently to be given charge of the calves. From the very beginning of their childhood, cowherd boys are trained to take care of the cows. And their first responsibility is to take care of the little calves. So, along with the, the older children, the older cowherd boys, Krishna and Balram, went into the pasturing ground and took charge of the calves. And there they played with their playmates. While taking charge of the calves, sometimes the two brothers played on their flutes and sometimes they played with amalak fruits and 
bale fruits. Just as small children play with the balls. Sometimes they danced and made tinking, tinkling sounds with their ankle bells. Sometimes they made themselves into bulls and cows by covering themselves with blankets. Thus Krishna and Balram played. The two brothers also used to imitate the sounds of bulls and cows and play at bullfighting. Sometimes they used to imitate the sounds of various animals and birds. In this way they enjoyed their childhood pastimes apparently like ordinary mundane children. Once when Krishna and Balram were playing on the bank of Yamuna, a demon of the name Vatasur assumed the shape of a calf and came there intending to kill the brothers. By taking the shape of calf, the demon could mingle with other calves. Krishna, however, specifically noticed this and he immediately alerted Balram about the entrance of the demon. Both brothers then silently approached him. Krishna caught hold of the demon calf by the two hind legs and tail, whipped him around very forcibly and threw him up into the tree. The demon lost his life and fell down from the top of the tree to the ground. When the demon lay dead on the ground, all the playmates of Krishna congratulated him. Well done, well done, and the demigods in the sky showered flowers with the great satisfaction. In this way, the maintainers of the complete creation, Krishna and Balram, used to take care of the calves every day. Beginning in the morning, and thus they enjoyed their childhood pastimes as cowherd boys in Vrindavan. One day all the cowherd boys went to the bank of river Yamuna to water their calves. When the calves drank water from the Yamuna, the boys also drank. After drinking, when they were sitting on the bank of the river, they saw a huge animal which looked something like a heron and was as big as a hill. Its top was strong as a thunderbolt. When they saw that unusual an animal, they became afraid of it. The name of this beast was Bakasur, and he was the friend of Kamsa's. He appeared on the scene suddenly and immediately attacked Krishna with his pointed sharp beak and quickly swallowed him up. When Krishna was thus swallowed, all the boys headed by Balram became almost breathless as if they had died. But when Bakasur demon was swallowing up Krishna, he felt a burning fiery sensation in his throat. This was due to the glowing effulgence of Krishna. The demon quickly threw Krishna up and tried to kill him by pinching him in his beak. Bakasu did not know that although Krishna was playing the part of a child of Nanda Maharaj, he was still the original father of Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe. Mother Yashoda's child, who is the reservoir of pleasure for the demigods and who is the maintainer of saintly persons, caught hold of the great gigantic heron by the two halves of his beak and before his coward boyfriends bifurcated his mouth just as a child very easily splits a blade of grass. From the sky the denizens of the heavenly planets showered flowers like Malika, the most fragrant of all flowers, as a token of their congratulations. Accompanying the showers of flowers was a vibration of bugles, drums and conch shells. When the boys saw the showering of flowers and heard the celestial sounds, they were struck with wonder. And when they saw Krishna freed from the mouth of the great demon Bakasur, all of them, including Balram, were so pleased that it seemed as if they had regained their very source of life. As soon as they saw Krishna coming toward them, they one after another embraced the son of Nanda and held him to their chests. After this, they assembled all the calves under their charge and began to return home. So we shall continue from here onwards tomorrow with our reading of this chapter, Killing the Demons, Batasur and Bakasur. So we have seen that Krishna has done some really big tasks which were not suitable for a little boy and everybody in the in his uh, community is awestruck by his 
heroic tasks by his heroism. They have moved from the Nandagram to Vrindavan now on the suggestion of Upanand, Nanda Maharaja's brother. So after reaching Vrindavan, he has managed to kill one demon already. We have read it and we'll be reading about another one who came as a big bird heron, Bakasur. So I wish you all a very blissful day ahead. We shall continue from here tomorrow. Hare Krishna.